All right, we got a new video today. And today I want to talk about stuff I've talked about in the past, but I want to get in more and more detail as possible. Um, recently, I just realized, I've been for many, many years, I've been preaching the gospel, the gospel, the gospel, the importance of it. I was thinking, I don't think people even know what the gospel is to even know it's important. So recently I did a video about that. I want to continue more about that, but I'm going to do something today I don't want to do. I've done all these videos and I, and I always try to address the problem and not the person. But I've been uh, seeing videos on YouTube about, and for some reason, YouTube gives me recommendations for this person. Sadly, I'm going to mention their name. I don't like to do that. I don't want to call anybody out and try to challenge anybody. I'm not doing that. I'm just trying to teach people the Bible. But this is getting so dangerous. And uh, he's not the only one doing it, but he's getting so dangerous, I'm going to have to mention his name. His name is Ray Comfort. And he, I, uh, I don't know a whole lot about him. I just know that he's a Lordship Salvationist. I've talked about Lordship Salvation before. He talked about, you know, repent of your sins and everything else. Uh, the, the big interesting thing about him is he's like, you know, he's usually on the street. He's telling people these things. And, um, you know, he's, when you, he tells me, he could say, he goes, repent of your sins. Okay, first, what's that mean? What's repent mean? He's not explaining it to people, especially to people that don't know the Bible at all. And he's, you know, why preach to someone that's already saved, you know? So he's going to people on the street. And, and I, I commend you for that. It's hard to go street preaching. It's really hard to do because you get a lot of criticism. You get a lot of people you know, freaking out and yelling at you, and you're going to get that. And, and what he's doing, that's brave, and I commend him for that. However, he's not preaching it correctly. He's not saving souls. And you're going to see that also with other people. I don't want to mention any more names. I'm not trying to call this out like I hate this guy. I really don't. And I mean, I guarantee my channel is so small he's not going to see it. But if he does, maybe he can get right in preaching teeth. He's never preached the gospel. He's never preached uh, the blood atonement. In all these things. Again, not trying to attack anybody. I'm not trying to do this by any means for YouTube views. I don't want to do this, but it's getting kind of dangerous. And I've heard about people over the year talk about, well, I got saved because he said, you know, repent of your sins because they, they watched on YouTube or something. So I'm like, hold on a minute. So let's get into the Bible. I don't care what I say. I don't care what anyone says. This, we care what Jesus says. Amen. Let's get your King James Bibles out because the King James Bible is the only true word of God and other Bible versions in English are wrong because I've got so many Bible versions and you're missing some things that is vital for salvation. And I've talked a lot about that in the past and watch back a few videos back. I've talked a lot about that because it's so important. Let's get into this. Let's see the word repent and repent. Whether he believes it or not, I don't know. But he's saying repent of your sins. And you hear that a lot with Pentecostals. You hear that a lot with uh, all these different uh, den church denominations. And people usually say that when they're doing what? They're not rightly dividing the Bible. 2 Timothy 2.15, study the show thyself to prove unto God. A work will be not ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Let's divide a little bit today. And we want to see why the gospel and where the gospel is in the Bible. Because people get mixed up. And I think he's mixed up because he's more following Jesus. He's one of them pick up your cross and follow Jesus kind of preachers. We're really only preaching Jesus. Now, as we know, if you've seen my videos before, Jesus Christ is God the Savior that spilled his blood for your sins. And without the shedding of blood is no remission. Hebrews 9.22. If that's, that's you have faith in the blood Jesus Christ spilled for your sins, you're going to hell. Because the blood is the salvation. The blood, he, then he died and rose in the third day. That's the gospel. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 1-4 through 4 is the gospel. You've got to know something to be saved. You just can't say, well, I repent of my sins. That doesn't do anything because it's not in the gospel for one. And what does repent mean? Because I'm not saying the guy is saying repent means stop sinning. I never heard him say that. Maybe he did. I don't know. But we know repent means doesn't mean stop sinning. Now mind you, we should not sin and try our best every day to not sin. And it's always a fighting, a never ending battle in this world. We have to try to fight against sin and not sin. But does not sinning save you? Of course not. Again, we shouldn't sin and try our best not to. Let's go back to Genesis chapter 6. We're back in Genesis. Genesis is a, just a great book. You ever get the chance you want to read something in the Bible? Read the book of Genesis. It's a long book, but boy, it's so good. There's so much wonderful things happen in Genesis and things like that. Let's go over to uh, Genesis chapter 6, verse 6 and 7. This is God speaking. It says, And it repented the Lord that he had made man on the earth, and it grieved him at, at his heart. Well, God repented. Did God sin? Nope. God's not capable of sin because he's the opposite of it. He's the exact opposite of sin because he is perfection. Verse 7. 
And the Lord says, I will destroy man I have created from the face of the earth, both man and beast, and of the creeping things, and the foul of the earth, for it repented me that I had made man. Verse 6 and 7, verse 6 and 7 of Genesis, of chapter 6, says God repented. Well, we know from Scripture, have you seen my other videos, repent means to feel sorry for. If you sin, you feel bad about it, then you've repented. And also repent means to, to change your mind and change your mind from the wrong way and change it to the right way, which is one is salvation. That's why Paul kept saying repent because he's telling these, these pagans in these cities, he's like, repent, get away from your idol worshiping and come to Jesus, your true God. You see, now, we know what repent means and even God repented. So let's see here. Let's go over to the facts here. Let's run over to uh, Romans chapter 11, verse 13. Let's rightly divide now. It's time to rightly divide. In scripture, and we see why we follow the gospel, 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4, for today. Why? Well, let's find out. Let's rightly divide our Bibles, which is so vitally important to rightly divide your Bibles. Romans eleven thirteen. Here's why we follow Paul today. Paul said in the Bible, follow me. Did Paul die for our sins? No. Do we worship Paul? No. Do we pray to Paul? No. Did, we're, Paul is repeating something that Jesus Christ told him to tell us. And here's why we know that. Romans eleven thirteen. 13. It says, For I speak unto you Gentiles, inasmuch as I am the apostle to the Gentiles, I magnify my office. What office? The office of apostleship. Paul was the last apostle. People want to get around, oh, there's an apostle today. Nope. The Bible teaches us there's no more apostles. If you, I don't want to get into that today, but if you read Acts chapter 2, I believe, it talks about what it looks, let's see here. In Acts chapter 2, it tells you what you have to do to qualify to be an apostle. Let's see here. It says, uh, it says here, I'm not going to read it today, but it says Acts chapter 1, starting in verse 20 through 26. It tells you, it says that uh, he had to, it says that, that he may take part of this ministry of apostleship for which, uh, for which Judas had died. It says, uh, let's see. It says, for worth this man, which have we, we have um, uh, complained with us all the time that the Lord Jesus went with us and among us, being from the baptism of John unto the same day that he was taken up from us, must one be ordained to be a witness with us of his resurrection. What's saying you had to be baptized by John the Baptist and you had to witness the resurrection of Jesus. Can you do that today? Nope. And that's a qualification to be an apostle. You no, know, Paul follows under that because clearly, you know, if it has to be an apostle, Paul had to have done that too. So we see that Paul is an actual apostle in the last of it. And we, we read in Scripture, he's the last apostle. Now, let's go over here. Let's see, look over here at Ephesians 1.13. Ephesians 1.13 says something. It's very interesting that people aren't really mentioning much. And Ephesians 1.13 is so amazing because if you look at this, Ephesians 1.13 says... In whom ye also trusted, after that you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation. In whom also, after that you believed, you were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. You have to know something to be saved. What? The gospel. Well, let's look over here, Romans 10. And people love to spout off Romans 10, 13 without reading the entire chapter and getting the context. And uh, Romans 10, 13, for who shall so call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Well... If you go over to Joel, chapter 2, verse 31 and 32, you see that Joel says the same thing about Israel. And how does Paul start chapter 10 in context? Let's talk context and rightly dividing. Romans chapter 10, 1. Brother, my heart's desire and prayer to God for Israel is that they might be saved. It's a lot of context in Israel, but if you keep going down, okay, you read 13. Let's read it again. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Verse 14. How can they uh, call on him who they have not believed? And how shall they believe on him who, who they have not heard? And how shall they call on him without a preacher? It's talking about, this. it says, So then faith coming by hearing and hearing by the word of God. But I say, have you not heard? Yes, verily, their sound which is unto the earth and their words unto the end of the world. But again, Paul, again in 19, says, By say, do not Israel know? <laughs> you know? It's talking more to Israel in chapter 10. But it's saying you've got to hear it. How can you believe in something you have not heard? What have you not heard? The gospel. How can you do that? And this 
Ray Comfort is going around and not giving the gospel. First Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. He's telling you to repent of your sins. And he's telling you to basically follow what Jesus' ministry was. Now, Jesus' ministry was the kingdom gospel. He was teaching people how to survive tribulation. And he was teaching people how to live in the millennial kingdom, which is the Jews coming promised land. That's not for today. That's not what Paul teaches. And uh, we have to understand that Paul is our apostle because he's the, the apostle to the Gentiles. Now, a, a Jew can get saved today, but they've got to come through Paul's message today until tribulation. Now, when tribulation begins, a new dispensation starts, and you've got to get saved a different way in tribulation, and you ain't going to like it. Right now, it's just by faith, believing. We don't do anything but believe and trust and, and have faith in what Jesus did, how he did it. You see? Now, let's look over here to 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 1-4, through 4, which is the gospel. 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4 is the gospel. It says, More of a brother, I declare unto you the gospel which I preach unto you, and also you were received, and where you stand, by which also you are saved, if you keep in memory of what I, what I preach unto you, unless you believe in vain. Well, vain is something you did. Well, how do you how do you save through his message? Well, I repented. Well, let's see if the repent, word repent is in the gospel. In verse 3, it says, For I deliver to you, first of all, which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures. And that he was buried and rose again the third day according to the scriptures. It's telling us how. Only the King James Bible has the word how in it. I did a video very recently on this channel about I have so many different Bible versions here uh, on this little uh, desk I have. And I went through so many Bible versions that are in, in English. I'm only talking about in English. And other, other languages I don't know. But, you know, we, I went through all of these and I have so many different Bible versions. This has like four different Bible versions in it right here. I went through all these, the Living Bible, I have the Living Bible here, you know, and, and all this other stuff. And not one of them said, how? Because they're just saying, and that Christ died. Okay, he died. I believe that he died. He did. But for salvation, it's not saying that he died, to believe in that he died. We believe in how he died. It's how, and only the King James Bible says how. And that one three-letter word, how, it's selling you, it's how he died. How did Jesus Christ die for your sins? Spilling his blood, making a blood sacrifice to God the Father from God the Son. And he died rose in the third day. Because if you're not trusting the blood atonement for salvation, there's a lot of verses in the Bible you're going to have to throw in the trash. Like Hebrews, um, excuse me, like um, well, like Hebrews 9.22 from one out to, forgot to, uh, about the uh, forgiveness of sin. There's, there's no shedding of blood. And there's no forgiveness about the shedding of blood. What about Romans 3.25? It says, For God set forth to be a propitiation through faith in his blood. And look at Romans Romans 5 anyway. If you were really careful and you read Romans 5, you could get saved in Romans 5. Romans 5, one. Therefore, being justified by faith, we have grace through God, uh, great grace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Justified. Faith. Okay, it's it's faith in it's faith. I have to have faith in what? In verse 9. More, much more than being justified by his blood, we shall be saved from wrath through him. Okay, faith in his blood, is that right? It's faith in his blood? In verse 11. And not only so, but we also joy in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom we have now received the atonement. Atonement means forgiveness. So it tells you in Romans 5, by faith in the blood, you're saved. That's all there is to it. And if you're just saying, repent of your sins... And I don't know what else he's saying. Repent of your sins. I mean, you know, I mean, he's got tons of videos out there. He's real famous. And people just like to feel good. Well, look what I did. Look what I did. I repented of my sins. I did it. Well, the Bible says you didn't. Who cares what you did? Because all you had to do was repent of your sins. Jesus didn't have to come down here and do this. But he was so loving and merciful, God the Son come down here and says, I'm going to pay for all the sins and the devil's not going to win. And what did Jesus do? He did just that. The powerful resurrected Messiah, Christ Jesus, had washed it all away in his own blood. People want to believe in water baptisms too. I'm just so sick of people. I got water baptism. The water washed my sins away. Well, that's not what the Bible says. I've never heard ever in the Bible of a Gentile getting saved by water baptism. Now, Jews, they would get saved. They would, you know, in the Old Testament, early book of Acts, they would get water baptized, just the Jews. And they would get, they'd get the Holy Spirit. But I'd never heard of a Gentile getting, getting uh, the Holy Spirit by water baptism. First Gentile ever to be saved in the Bible was Cornelius. Peter preached to him. And Peter him, told him you know, about Jesus and they got saved. 
because the Holy Spirit fell upon him without water baptism. What did Jesus say before he ascended into heaven? Soon water baptism is going to matter. Let's read it actually right now. Of course, that's in uh, Acts chapter 1. And Jesus says, not many days hence, there'll be no more water baptism. Now, water baptism, I don't know if that Ray Comfort's saying this or not. I'm just saying this that's added in. It says, for Jesus, uh, Acts 1, 5, it says, For John truly baptized with water, but ye shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost not many days hence. How do you get baptized in the Holy Ghost or the Holy Spirit? Well, let's go back to Ephesians 1, 13 again, what we just read. Ephesians 1, 13, here's how you get baptized with the Holy Spirit. In whom you also trusted, after that you heard the word of truth, the gospel, your salvation, in whom also you, after that you believed, you were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. Being sealed with the Holy Spirit is the same thing as baptized in the Holy Spirit. There's no water necessary. <laughs> There's blood necessary. In that blood of Jesus, that faith, in that blood, he faith, he died and rose again the third day. Now let's see here, because I'm going to make it very clear about something. Let's look at a, a couple places here in Romans again. Now Romans 2.16 says something pretty shocking. If you're not careful, you miss it, because Romans 2.16 is so much of a short, uh, so much of a short verse. Romans 2.16, in the days when God shall judge the secrets of men by Jesus Christ according to my gospel, Paul says. What's God's Paul, uh, Paul's gospel? Well, he declared it in 1 Corinthians 15, 1-4. That's the gospel. You'll be, if you lived in the church age, you'll be judged by that gospel. And people are going to stand before Jesus coming out of hell. And Jesus is like, okay, what would you do with my gospel? Well, apparently not much because you're in hell. And these people are trying to show people this is how you get saved. And people don't know their Bibles, a lot of them. And uh, they're going to go and be, um, be lost and not know why. It's pretty terrible because they're not reading their Bibles. Let's read uh, 1 Corinthians 9, 17. It says, For if I do this thing willingly, I have a reward. But if against my will, a dispensation of the truth is uh, committed unto me. Let me see. 9, 16. Or, sorry, it was uh, not 17. It was 16. For though I preach the gospel, I have nothing to glory of, for necessity is laid upon me. Yea, woe is unto me if I preach not the gospel. If I preach not the gospel. And the Bible says that if you trod the blood of Jesus underfoot, you have a severe punishment. Uh, let's look here. Uh, Romans, excuse me, Hebrews 10, 29. Of how much sore punishment suppose ye should he be thought worthy who has trodden under the foot the Son of God and has counted the blood of the covenant wherewith he was sanctified an unholy thing and has done despite unto the Spirit of grace. People are not preaching the blood and the rapture is on its way. I don't know when the rapture is coming. Tomorrow? Today? A hundred years? I don't know. I have no idea when the rapture is. If I knew, I'd love to know. But I don't know. I'm telling you right now, if I'm not preaching to you the gospel, then shame on me. And so many preachers don't have the gospel and they're telling it to you because people don't understand the importance of it. I've been preaching the gospel, preaching my head off for years. I'm thinking, dawn on me like a month or so ago, like, maybe people don't even know what the gospel is to be, know the importance of it. The gospel shows you what to believe in to be saved. If you don't know the gospel, you're going to hell because the gospel tells you what to believe in, to believe in how Christ died. How did he do it? Spilling his blood. It's all about that blood that Jesus spilled. It's all about Jesus and nothing about you. I don't care if you repented for your sins. I don't care because the gospel doesn't mention it. Sure, I believe that repent is an automatic action. Because if you got saved and you changed your mind from doing wrong to be like to doing something right, be like, wait a minute. I believe this and I believe Jesus. I believe in his blood for my salvation. He died and rose in the third day. Oh, you just repented. If you're a Christian and you feel bad, you sinned. You go, oh, I feel so bad. I wish I wouldn't have done it. Oh, congratulations, you repented. It doesn't mean stop sinning, but by God in heaven, don't sin. Try our best not to do so. Every day is a struggle for Christians to try not to sin and do our best. But I hope this video helps you. I'm not calling this guy out to, to add YouTube views and everything else. I'm not doing that. It's just getting so dangerous to where some people have got to speak up. Lordship salvation is wrong because they're telling you, you just got to do this and repent of your sins. And a lot of big time preachers are doing it. That's why they're so famous and popular because they're not preaching the gospel to the the devil's letting them go. Okay, go for it. <laughs> Whatever. But I don't mean to talk bad about anybody. And I hope this helps you. And I'll talk to you later.